How'd you find out? It's easy. I got my spies too, you know. Got to stop them. Here everything's going according to plan, and any attempt to stop us now could lead to disorder and rebellion. They mustn't get beyond the mountains. You got something that'll stop them. Money. This time it's different. Same as the last time? It's not enough. I want double. It's a hard job. What's the matter? Afraid of three men? No. But these guys are rangers. And I'm only one. Three freaking supermen for the martial race. You'll get the rest when they're dead. Hello, folks. Uh, I am Gary Hill with you today. And um, I am also with Ricky Morgan. How are you doing, sir? What's happening, man? This is the the show on the the free feed that was formerly formerly known as as, as um the Burnt Ends. You get those on Patreon, no problem now. But you know to to, to fit the the format and the love of of why we're doing this, and you know just for the love of cinema and for our friend Johnny Krug, I'm I'm giving a, a throwback to the Kruger Nation. He had a segment on his show called "Look What You Did," as preferring yep. to you know look what your brother did at the door in uh Texas right. Chainsaw Massacre, where I I forget. I, he he talked about something that was wrong in the horror industry. I'm gonna skip that, and and because you know there's a lot wrong with the horror industry today, but um I, I'm gonna go with um the most outrageous thing we saw in the movie that they, they, they called the, the look what you did for each individual movie. So that'll be the format of having fun with this and saying what was the craziest thing you saw in this movie. And I I'm, 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 I I think I have mine already. And, uh, <laughs> it's right near the beginning, so there you go. Um, there's there's a there's a bunch in this one to me that just kind of like wait a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the odd intro, but um, Ricky, how you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome, man. Uh, you know, you you let me pick a movie, and I literally just threw threw a dart at the dartboard and picked this movie because uh, before we started rolling, I told him I said, look. I said it's called 2020 Texas Gladiators. It's from the 80s, and it's Italian. I, I'm sold. I mean, I, I I never seen anything about this. I just saw the artwork and the name, and I said we got to do it because I know it's going to work for this show. Yeah, you know, if you look at the artwork, you know, one, one of the guys kind of works on the movie, but he has, doesn't have a mohawk, so I guess they're going <laughs> for the whole Vernon Wells thing with that guy. Yeah, right. But, but I mean, there's no doubt what this is kind of ripping off. So. His back is about as big as his head is. If you look at the picture, it's just that's uh, it's nuts. But yeah, this is one of those elusive uh, that they've made many of uh, the 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 good old Mad Max ripoffs that we all know and yeah. love. And this is just one of them out of probably the hundred and fifty that exist. Most of them are Italian too. Most of them are Italian. <laughs> Although one day I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see if I can find copies of the Turkish stuff. That's just freaking oh. crazy. Yeah. Tur- Turkish Rambo, Turkish Mad Max, uh, Turkish Star Wars. They made them on like a thousand dollars or something. So it, it shows. <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, what was the oh, what's, what was the what was the Turkish film that's a uh, uh, Freddy Krueger ripoff? But it's but it's then it's a musical as well. What's that called? I think it's a Bollywood man. I think I think that's a. Oh, uh, maybe it's Bollywood. I think yeah. So. It's uh, amazing. I know what you're talking about, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know what you're talking about. Oh. My gosh. But this is 24 yeah. Texas Gladiators um, from 1983, directed by, jo- jo- I guess, the co-direction, according to IMDb. Yep. Joe D'Amato and George Eastman worked on this. Right. George Eastman uh, helped write this with Aldo Florio. This stars yep. Al Cliver, Harrison Mueller, uh, Daniel S- S- Stephen, Stephen, uh, my fault. Uh, Peter <laughs> Peter Hooten. These things have weird freaking names. Uh, <laughs> well, they're Italian. <laughs> yeah, they're Italian. <laughs> Except for Hell uh, Yamanuchi, who, who's in this movie as Red Wolf, which I gotta give him, you know, credit here. They, they actually get some real some real natives to play these roles, and they're not at all in, in you know native face, which I, I can I can appreciate that. <laughs> uh, our girl Goretta Goretta shows up in this, I, and I thought sure I is. saw her too. You know, like yeah, there she is. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of uncredited people, apparently. So, so we're, we're going to go with that. Your, your cheapo IMD plot synopsis is, In a post-apocalyptic Texas, a band of warriors fight against a fascist re- regime that is trying to take control of all surviving population. That's that's off, but whatever. We'll talk about it, you know. <laughs> that's the least of the concerns in this one. <laughs> yeah. 
They want the power, Ricky. They want the power. <laughs> the, 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 the random Nazi leader in this movie he wants the power. Yeah. It's like, where did this guy come from? <laughs> he, came, he came out of Hogan's Heroes, and we'll talk about that too, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, it's it's literally like they just pulled another character. I mean, that's what's weird about this one, right? Because it's supposed to be 2020, if you, you know, post-apocalyptic, futuristic, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what makes it so fun. I mean, and, and you said it while ago. If, if even you've been listening to the Doctor movie stuff, I did several Diamato flicks that George Eastman was in and co-directed and co-star or starred in. So, you know, I'm always happy to see that team up because I know I'm in for there. It, it may kind of drag a little, but there's going to be some stuff in there. You're going to be like, okay, <laughs> here's my money. <laughs> I mean, I love I love the way this one starts because you, you know just as you're gonna get kind of with the way it starts where they're, they're these guys these I guess these different factions are invading this one place and like they're gonna go have a go have a scrap all at once because it doesn't yeah. like, really go anywhere except for here's these guys that are that are with no shirts but they had they have gun belts on <laughs> here here comes the lepers from the Omega Man coming to chime in. Yep. These machete wielding maniacs coming to chime in. It kind of reminds me of the scene from Anchorman, where all the Anchorman got together to have that giant fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking Clockwork Orange, but yeah, well, you're right. Too. But there was like, <laughs> it's like five... Clockwork Orange and and Anchorman put together. <laughs> there was like five gangs going at once, and like you're wondering where, where's this going? And like, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, I'm just keep rolling, man. I mean, it's just the, these people that are, you know, the, the white ash skin, like you said, they're, I don't know if they're lepers or what, but, you know, they're kind of zombie-ish, I guess. Uh, and you, and you got to have the girl on the floor that's, you know, being grouped, uh, groped and handled and trying to rape her and all that stuff. And, you know, then all of a sudden our, our, our uh, rangers come in, which is all of our Texas gladiators. So it's funny, it's called Texas Gladiators, but they refer to them as the Rangers in the movie. And yeah, they've all got their, their bullet belts wrapped around their chest and come in all guns blazing. <laughs> yes, they do. It's, it's wild. And then you, you get all that in the beginning, and then you get to this whole aside of like what this film is really about, which are these people, you know, much like in The Road Warrior, have, have fashioned a little colony, but this is built around a power plant. And they figured out how to make it work, and this not like, built not built around a power plant. Yeah. They're living in the power plant. Yeah, in the power plant, you know. <laughs> I mean, like, here's a closet. I'll move in here. <laughs> this is not my bedroom. Yes, indeed. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're isolated. So what happens is this group, uh, the Rangers. There's what five of them, I think, and uh, one of them. Uh, sees a, a a blonde girl that ends up being a bigger part of the movie later on. Uh, What's her called? Malda. <laughs> but uh, he decides, you know, hey, I'll just pull down my pants and we'll go to town. And the other rangers stop him and they kind of kick him out of the group. And then Al Cliver, our favorite guy from, you know, Fulci Zombie, <laughs> uh, he's nice to her and tries to take care of her stuff. And she says, hey, we've got this place back at this power plant. Would you come live with us? So he does. And I never thought that people in, even now in 2020, if the world was destroyed, that you'd still be wearing 80s, you know, clothes and wearing hard hats. <laughs> you know, just kind of threw me for a loop there. <laughs> well, they had her who was wearing it. This is, this is a part, part of my, no, no, I'll get into this now. The outfit she's wearing in this movie she has one boob covered up and one boob hanging down, but has a pasty over it so you can't see her nipple, you know? Yeah. And the child is with her. Uh, I have to say, when I was watching this movie, it's like, wow, that's some fabulous wig work right there. This, this, <laughs> you think this kid is going to be like the feral kid from Mad Max 2, but it doesn't really happen because this yeah. wig is just out everywhere. And this yeah. girl that I made, I made this comment on Facebook like, when I was watching it, like, he's like, Makes you ask the important questions, like, are nipple pasties that expensive in the wasteland? Because she's, <laughs> she's only wearing one, so, you know, that's a... Yeah, I imagine they're kind of hard to come by, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this, this whole concept of living in this power plant and working it, they're not just living there. They're, they're, <laughs> they're using this thing, and, you know, you have to have chaos, right? So not only do you have this group of renegade bikers that all look all Mad Maxed out, right, like all the bad guys, and they're hanging out in the mountains not far from here, but at the same time, you've got, you know, this guy's working on this pipe, and it explodes, and it's about to blow the whole place up, and Al Cliver has to go in there and save the day, only to walk out and say, holy crap, here comes a bunch of guys on motorcycles trying to kill us all. <laughs> and they know that they're a threat, obviously, because they have this whole protocol set up where they're going to show up. They have alarms going off. Yeah. yeah. All, all these farmers have automatic rifles going. <laughs> You know, they know how to load their guns. It's like, yeah, yeah, this has happened before, but the security is, like, so low. And they're they're literally all these different kinds of people, which I kind of enjoy, because they're, they're not all decked out like Mad Max 2. Yeah. These are, like, normal, normal folks, like the, the the guy who unfortunately gets shot and killed, that's the, fa- that's the father, is like a, like a farmer. He's wearing overalls. He's just, he's that's, just a regular blue-collar guy, you know? It's that's a, that's what I mean. That's what's so weird. And I thought, you know, when it changed the scene from them rescuing her and then it just jumped to this thing, I thought, are we going back in time? Because they are dressed like, you know, regular work clothes. You would figure with all this time passing, those clothes wouldn't be around. You'd have to make your own stuff, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just one of those things I was just like, where did they find all these, you know, casual '80s clothes in 2020? <laughs> well, if you, if you go by, you know, it's always sunny logic. He found that denim underneath the bridge, and then, then they <laughs> then they boiled it, you know, to make it clean again. So you know, that's, uh... <laughs> we do it, Charlie. Mm. Boiling some denim. Come on now. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so they 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 attack their 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 compound, and but they're they're, they're ready to go. But, but you think yeah. that this this is this happens like every other day because. As important as this power plant is, which is like I guess the only source of power that that exists, you know, they, they bust up in their hood. They they finally get it because I, I love this aspect of it. They have these impenetrable shields that are <laughs> impenetrable to bullets, but not impenetrable to something else that comes later on. Yeah, which is that that's, a, that's... A, a real victory to those people later on. You know, <laughs> now, that's got to be the most outrageous thing in this movie, I think, because. You know, you're shooting bullets <laughs> at these guys who are dressed like extras from the black hole, and uh, they're marching all in sequence. And you got this big black vehicle that they'll get out of. It's very, you know, it, the vehicle looks very Mad Max. They all get out and they line up and they just do a march, and everybody's shooting, and you see the bullets just bouncing off. But the shields are empty. They got a, like an outer layer on them, and then the inside. So you're shooting at them, and the bullets bounce off. Even the part that's empty, but then they can stick their gun through that and shoot you. And I'm yeah. like, okay. It's like, it's like, wait, they're not paying attention. Let's stick our rifles through right now. <laughs> you know, we've killed just enough of them where they'll never notice. Yeah. Yeah, there's the, uh, I, mean, I don't know. Even in Robocop, they say, shoot him in the mouth. Yeah, no shit. It's, it's, it's sitting, <laughs> sitting right there gaping open for them to shoot Robocop in the mouth if they want to. But, um. <laughs> Somebody with the right aim can say, hey, look, I see a hole in their armor, you know, real old-fashioned, like, military stuff. I say, I see a chink in their armor, which is these, you know, when they decide it's, to fire the It's weapon. not a hole. <laughs> it's 75% of the shield is open. Yes. <laughs> so they're really That's lousy just, shots. Which I'm not surprised. This is the, you, could, this, you could kick a soccer ball in it. I mean. <laughs> this, this is 2020, guys, and, you know. I guess they're really lousy shots amongst these farmers with pitchforks that now have rifles and are fighting for this power plant. And um, I, I love it. I love it. And then yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's that's ridiculous, what it man. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, what, that's what we're here for. <laughs> not, not Colonel Clink. What, what was what was the guy? The other guy's name of Hogan's Heroes when he shows up in this this movie. You know, it's gonna be uh, crazy. Clink's all I can think of. Yeah, so. that's all I can think of. Well. The main but boss, yeah. the main boss of Hogan's Heroes, uh, when right. he shows up in this, it's not him, but he looks just like him. All he's missing is the monocle, you know. Yeah, and he, he's surprisingly the leader of of this this troop that's supposed to be Nazis, I guess, because he's dressed in a very SS uniform for no reason in this movie. Very much, yeah. He he comes to play his intentions. Basically, said that they they 
we'll live together. But you know, well, you're going to give everything to us as far as like this this power plant goes, because you know, much like yeah. Paul Stanley said in the Shocker song, you know, we want the power. <laughs> that was for Suzanne, by the way. Uh, she hates when I do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they they, they they want the power, much like you know in in in, in Mad Max Two, where they want the they want the gas yep. that may or may not exist in in, in Mad Max Two, you know. <laughs> but I mean, and he stands up and goes, "We are the new order," and I'm sure they're just going, "Big whoop," yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like we saw you motherfuckers last week, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like said, no they're, surprise they're, here. They're obviously prepared for him to come because they're they they're literally come out guns blazing, and, and they do get a few of them, including the homegirl's homeboy's girlfriend on the motorcycle, which I think was a nice, oh yeah, a, a nice Mad Max two throwback. Except she didn't get a boomerang in the head. <laughs> yeah, she just gets shot between the eyes, and that and the guy that's driving the bike, who ends up being the second henchman here. Is catch dog, and he's the guy that was trying to rape the girl earlier. That was in the Rangers team. Yeah. Now he's he's the bad guy, or he's the second in command of the bad guys. So he's the Darth Vader of this movie. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, but after this happens, though, of course, it, you know they, they come out and f- farmer father, whatever that guy's name is. I I forget I forget all most of these names in this movie. The guy in the overall. It don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. He try he tries to be the Mr. hero. Mr. Green Jeans. Mr. Green Jeans tries to be the hero. Um, after attending, I guess the the whatever fields or or power fields or whatever else going on in this fucking place, you know, because yeah. it's very important, but it's not very well protected, obviously, <laughs> and. uh he gets he gets shot and killed, unfortunately, you know, leaving his family. You know, and um, this is when the Rangers uh, come in and you know do their thing, which is easily the best part about this movie. You know, because yeah. they 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 get away, with, with, they leave the child behind, right? Well, the the girl gets sold, uh, the blonde haired girl. They kill Al Claver. Yeah, and they take her away, and then they go and find her, and it's at this, and it's. <laughs> It's in this country and western bar. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the most random part about this movie is this country yeah. and western bar where... J- just to remind you, we're in Texas, right? <laughs> in Texas, and, and not Lee Van Cleef is playing Russian roulette at the bar for fun. Yep, yeah, we got the, the scene from the deer hunter going on here where the two guys are at the poker table playing Russian roulette. And obviously, you know, your your main bad guy, you know, does something to the gun or it shoots the other guy. And then, uh, our main hero, Peter Hooten here, whose name is what? Helicon. Yes. That sounds about right. Helicon. I tried, I tried to read that name, but yeah, it sounds about right. And, uh, he goes up against this guy and makes a bet to win the girl. And he realizes there's a trick to it. He sees what the guy's doing. And of course it's one of those things, right? There's that thing when he tricks him and, Makes the bad guy end up shooting himself, so he gets the girl. And but at the same time, with all this happening, there's a big brawl that happens. Then the sheriff and everybody shows up, and they catch the these guys. There's there's what two of them that's in the bar, uh, Jab and Helicon. Helicon's at the table. Jab's standing around, ready to jump into action, and it ends up getting a little squirrely. And then the sheriff and everybody comes in and takes those two guys and puts them in prison <laughs> it has them like working in a, in a salt mine <laughs> yeah it's just like huh what locations can we use around here yeah well, let's just let's go from this to that it'll work just fine we, you know we got those big rocks over let's do something with those and uh but boy do they you know <laughs> in this movie and we've got uh red wolf who just he he's always around but you never see him, right? He's he's like Michael Myers. He just kind of stays back, never never with the pack because he knows if something happens they're all captured. And he's kind of like the cat on Hong Kong Fui. He always has to end up saving the day, right? <laughs> yeah, he is kind of like that that omnipresent thing that's hanging around this movie until he comes into play much later in a much bigger way with their right. with their fancy shields that they um <laughs> They 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 they, they uh, overcome those fancy shields. We'll talk about that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Red Wolf comes in and breaks them out of prison, and uh, they regroup. And 
they're they're heading back to fight for the power plant and win it back and also get this girl's daughter that they've been separated from. And they're running to guess what, folks? Indians. <laughs> yes. Indians. In twenty twenty, after the world's been destroyed, <laughs> there's Indians with TPs. Which is kind of wonderful if you think about it. This is 2020. <laughs> you know, the natives have taken back their land in Texas. You know, they they take it from Mexico, apparently, because that was Mexican land. And then, you know, they said, fuck it, man. This, this is our land now. And <laughs> I, it, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's wonderful or not. <laughs> it, 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 it kind of turns into, like, you know. The whole it, Western thing, it's, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not great, but I will compare it to. You know, Ten Bears and Josie Wales, you know, and that, that relationship. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're obviously pulling from other resources as far as building this story. They're just <laughs> mixing it all together, and hopefully it works. <laughs> it does It does play into the, the finale of this movie, though, so I would give... Yes, absolutely. I would give yeah. it to them to, to say, you know, that um, these two get together, Red Wolf and, and, and our hero... Uh, was a Halicon Halcyon Halcyon batteries on it. This guy's guy's name is you know. <laughs> uh, it gets together, and uh, of course, um, they have this whole uh, conversation about well, they have guns, we just have bows and arrows. What's that gonna do? Well, we find right. out a lot, apparently. Yeah. You found know. out. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, because you can throw a spear and it'll go right through one of them shields. Yes. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets won't go through it. No, bullets are impenetrable, but you know. If anybody listening can tell me how that works, let me have it because I'm my ears are open. I want to believe, but I just don't know that I do. <laughs> Their fancy riot gear is impervious to guns that make rate. And I have to say this this is one of the cheapest things that I've seen about this movie. And no, this will be my what I'm gonna leave there for my what would you did thing because you know the, the the sound design of this movie, but um the noise these guns make is freaking wild as hell. <laughs> yeah. it, it is impenetrable to, yeah. to 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 bullet fire, but when when they bust in w- with these wonderful natives with their bows and arrows and spears and they're just like shooting them in the air like they're elves in, in Mordor or something, yeah. you know, this yeah. this is just killing yeah. everybody. And you you kind of yeah. win because. <laughs> Like you know what the white man's not getting done. Let's do it. For, let's hear it for the friggin' natives. You know, I love it. You know. So yeah, I mean, you get this crazy collaboration of these teams get together and fighting this evil. Even though the Indians, do they have any beef with these people? No. I mean, they're just kind of out on their own thing, right? They just I mean, re- they just really hate sort of Nazis. Apparently. It's not one of those things where they say the bad guy's name. They're like, count us there. <laughs> you know and. <laughs> You know, they have no beef with this guy. Well, we'll go help you because, you know, we ain't got nothing else to do because we're Indians. <laughs> well, I, I would imagine that, you know, now these people have helped them, that they're going to share their resources with them and and, and live in peace because I'd imagine that's what's, what's going to happen next. But Just like the white man did the first time around, right? Yeah, because the white man <laughs> did that the first time around for sure. But I would like to imagine a more happy uh. conclusion to what happens here, you know. <laughs> Because they're they're Italians oh, for man. Christ's sake. Come on, man. You know, but yeah, I, I love I love the idea. The idea, <laughs> the idea that it makes them like they even go into like Rambo mode in a way. Because when they retreat into they retreat into the mountains, you know, in, the, in their fancy you know car vehicle, and um, uh, the the, the colonel, <laughs> yeah, the captain, thing, man. You know, who, who's really tired of, of of Colonel Hogan at this point, uh, says, you know, you go 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 to the mountains and and get these people. And the guy basically says, you know, they're rangers, you know, they'll take a whole lot more than that. All I can hear is uh, Colonel Troutman saying about Rambo, only thing you're going to need is a fresh supply of yep. body bags, you know. Just, uh... Right. <laughs> yep. But yeah, like the, the thing they, when he, when he thinks that he killed, he thinks he killed him off, he says, I want to see the body. He said, might be hard to do. I might could scrape him up with my knife. And that guy just bust out in that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, come on, guys. <laughs> it's just no proof. You know, he's going to come back and bite him in the butt again. Come on, you know. Right, right. So, yeah, you know, the, the, the smart plan for, for these bad guys was we got all the people that we want uh, captured down here in, in this in this valley, you know, this mountainside, and there's only like four of them. But you know how we'll kill them? An avalanche. <laughs> It works. We're gonna make an it works for him. It's a very small avalanche, you know, but it works for him, you know. How does it, how does it kick off that avalanche? I forgot now. I just watched this today, too. 
Do they like I think they it? just had some dynam some dynamite and they placed it in places and they shot it with a gun and it exploded. Yes, yes, that's what happened. I remember I remember the dynamite them them lighting a particular one one stick of dynamite and making yeah. it, making something explode real good in this movie. And this is another thing too, because we get the space aged car. I'm doing quotation marks here because it's that typical car that we see in these type of movies where they try to hide that it's an actual modern car. They changed the body style and they painted a different color and put spikes all over it. You know, it's that kind of thing. But they do absolutely nothing to the motorcycles. And you go, well, look, there, that's a Honda. Then there goes a Suzuki. <laughs> you know, so it's just like, again, you know, it's, it's those details. You're like, that's that's the things that end up, end up hurting these kind of movies because you're like, why is everybody riding dirt bikes? But all the vehicles have to be specialized, you know, like they're from a different time. And these bikes are straight up 1983, you know. <laughs> it, it is one of the better action set pieces of the movie, though, where they're driving around the convertible. Here comes these motorcycles coming out of the woodwork, yeah. and they're they're doing these bonkers yeah. stunts on these bikes that you know just look unsafe. Yeah. Which There's is... some no, there's no <laughs> doubt. I mean, again, you remember this is Italian. Yes. So they're like, well, do you have a pad for me to fall on when I you know jump off the bike up in the air 20 feet? No, no, the ground will be soft enough. <laughs> That's what I love about these flicks, man. The, the safety, eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Tuck and roll, boy. Tuck and roll. That's it. That's it. We paid you to do a job. <laughs> we'll throw these uh, these cushions on your shoulders, so you make sure you bump right, you know, like, like, like in wrestling. Make sure you bump right, son, you know. <laughs> well, can I wear a helmet? Well, how's everybody going to know who you are if you're wearing a helmet? So, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, precisely. Precisely. You know, it just sounds sounds too safe. And this is that kind of movie. Like, safety is just thrown out the window. Right. Which I'd imagine right. they, they, they shot these these uh, these scenes on the rocks in, like, real desert locations. Because it looks good. That's probably some of the oh, yeah. stuff that looks Yeah, it's, it's legit. This definitely shot on location. There's There's no argument there. You know... Uh, just the things in question is, you know, the fact that you, <laughs> you're going through all this and the only thing that's really uh, – they decided they wanted this to be a Western in the middle of Mad Max, and that's where you get the cowboy bar that's even got like Atari console games over in the corner. I mean you've got – I think it's like Defender or something going on. And it's just that thing of not reaching out beyond, you know, the time frame of the current, you know. You you want things to look futuristic, but all you got is modern technology. You know. Speaking of the current, I'm gonna see real uh, electrical current here. Is my favorite scene of the movie when they are invading <laughs> the power plant, and they shoot the console. I guess where power is controlled, and the guy just starts like dancing against the thing. <laughs> when he's being yeah. electrocuted. It just looks really bad. That's my oh, favorite yeah. acting of the entire movie, right there. You know. <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, you get a showdown with Red Wolf and that gladiator-looking dude that's, you know, the big, you know, kind of big burly guy. It's, looks like he'd be, I don't know, working for Shredder. <laughs> Tonight I died on Ranger Soup. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm sure uh, little little uh, SS would love some, some Ranger Soup at this point, but he keeps getting foiled. You know, by the, the natives right. and their spears and, and bows and arrows. Like, damn, we never knew this could penetrate our shields. Like, yeah, but it's doing it now, Jack, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what did you test these shields with? I mean, being that I'm sure that after the engineers built those, that somebody probably said, you know, you know, I like the design of the shield, but you're kind of missing something all in the middle. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's a force field. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, they have class four armor that is penetrable to their their Italian weapons, and you know, <laughs> but the native weapons not so much. Hey. Because the, the the native, like I said, my favorite thing is about the plot points of this film is that the natives finally get a one up in this movie. It, it doesn't happen too often in films like this. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's again, they just uh, you know shoot the arrows, throw the spears right through the shields. Knocking off the black hole soldiers, it's it's fun. <laughs> they they got to go, man. You know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> man, oh man. All right, we uh we we dove in about much we're going to on this one, I think. 
Any final things you want to say about it, Ricky? Uh, 2020 Texas Gladiators? Uh, again, to all the people that are, you know, Dr. Movie people or whatever, if, if you like these Italian flicks I've been covering, then yeah, you got to check this one out because it's just as ridiculous. <clears throat> Makes about as much sense as, I don't know, well, any of the other ones. <laughs> But the, again, there is there is such a charm to these. Yes, you are watching a ripoff of other movies that are better, but there's always this originality that pops up in these things that amazes me. And it could be the most ridiculous thing, like a shield that you can you know have open and sh- shoot bullets and it doesn't do anything, but you can throw a spear through it. Um, you know. You're not going to see anything you haven't really seen before in this one except for <laughs> except for those kind of details. Uh, it's scattered. It kind of threw me off. I actually watched this one twice just so I knew what was going on. And, uh, you know, it's fun. It's fun. It's, you know, if you're home, sick day from work, throw this Joker on and watch it. Oh, it's also called Endgame. I think, like, on Tubi and stuff like that, if you see a movie called Endgame, it's the same thing as this, I believe. So, yeah. but yeah, you know me. I love the Italian stuff. I ain't got a problem with it. And uh, Severin put this on on on, on 4K or, or Blu-ray. One of the two. It looks really good on the Severin disc I hear. So, and and my question there is why? <laughs> why? I, I, I mean, there's some movies to me that just need to stay grainy and ugly because it really makes it better. I, I think if you clean some of these films up, it kind of hurts them. I, I have seen. I will say this about this film. I have seen films that have exec, executed this 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 concept, this Mad Max ripoff thing, a lot worse than this movie. I mean, it's really, oh, yeah. it's really a yeah. smorgasbord of different genres. But you know what? That's that's what like Italian cinema is for some of this stuff. Just mixing stuff together to see what sticks. And that's it. Does, it. it doesn't all stick in this movie. But I can I can recommend it because it's out there and. There's a lot of stuff going on, and it 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 comes to a I say a satisfying conclusion. You know, it doesn't just end. I I I can I mean so many films that are supposedly good films that just like end. That's the end of your movie. And yeah. I, you know yeah. that's this one really doesn't do that. You know, you got, well, this you got good guys and bad guys. You know, good guys come and save the day. Mm-hmm. You know, with with some help. Like I said, it's Josie Wales in the end. Uh, although yep. Ten Bears isn't really doing, he's kind of kind of stands there with his with his, with, with his uh, his troops, is saying, staring, saying, "Yep, we're, we're here for you, Josie." The, the, Seven Samurai. Yeah, it's, oh yeah. it's you know, it's, it's once upon a time in the West. I mean, it's magnificent seven. I mean, so many. Yeah, I mean, it's so it's many, that standard setup. Yeah, so many genres. I love it though. I'm sorry. Hmm? No, no, you're going. I'm just interrupting. No, you're, no I'm interrupting <laughs> you. I apologize. No, not one bit. But uh, this this is the fun part of the show, I think, because this this is a wacky film, and uh, this is this is for our friend. Jo- we lo- we love you, Johnny. If I can find, if I can find, again, if, I, if you're listening to this show, if you have Crew Grenade episodes archived somewhere on your computer. Uh, send it to one of us, please. I, hell, I'll I'll, put, I'll even put them out on on the feed just so you guys can listen to them. Um, t- to the look what yeah. you did. There, I mean, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I was just gonna say that. He was in the process of trying to put all the old shows back together and move them over to Legion when when everything happened. So I'd, I'd finally convinced him to, to you know, move all of this stuff over and start anew. I mean, he was planning to, you know, he'd already wrote out his first episode coming back. So, yeah. So this is for you, Johnny. So this, this segment is for you, for sure. The Look What You Did segment. <laughs> Look what your brother did. Now, Ricky, in this movie, if you could think of, you know, the most outrageous thing you could think of in this movie, um, and there's a lot of outrageousness in this movie, what would yeah. that what would that one thing or that one scene be? Uh, you know, we, we beat the shield thing to death, which I think far and beyond is probably the biggest look what you did. But let's talk about this. She's on the bad people's team. It's not Jaretta. It's uh, the other girl. That's got this open top outfit on <laughs> that her boobs are just sticking out of it like it's designed that way. Yeah, that's the one, the, the one with the pasty, the one pasty I was talking about. Yeah. Well, because, you know, she's a baddie. She's all around. She's got this leather 
piece on, but it's like, <laughs> where do you consider this to be safe? <laughs> you know, is it just another excuse to show more skin because it's really not that effective? And I don't know. It 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 kind of bothered me. <laughs> I, I, I have a theory for that, that it's especially warm in the wasteland, obviously. The sun's constantly blazing. You know, maybe she chafed in that one boob. I don't know. We just kind of had to hang there for a while. It, it, uh... <laughs> just some weird choices. It seems like everywhere that our heroes went, there's some chick sitting there with one boob hanging out. I mean, that's just, that's that's the future, folks. That's the future. I mean, even... Uh... I think at this time in, in the in the in the eighties or like even into the nineties, you you had boobs on the on the local news in Italy. So I guess it's not that bashful. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, no. I mean that they were a lot more open about that stuff. They were they were more back off of you know actually more of the violent stuff than anything else. Yep. Now, maybe not them. Maybe more UK. Oh, boy. Yeah. My my look. What you did is the sound design of this movie. I mean, it's all over the place, especially yeah. the, the the firefights are the weirdest thing in the world because you, you hear these rifles going off and a lot of it sounds like bulls, but all of a sudden you hear like a ray gun in there somewhere and yeah. like, like, like they're on GI Joe, but nobody has these kind of guns. So if you're right. watching it, you, 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 you're, you're, you're listening to it. It makes it more outrageous that you hear these, this, this weird sound design, you know, mixed in and a lot of stuff's crazy in this movie. Ricky mentioned that, and um, my, my look what you did is something I mentioned already. The, the guy doing his electricity dance when he gets pushed up against <laughs> the, the the broken uh, power supply thing. Because it, yeah, it's, it's a it good is, one. It is something to behold. It, um, <laughs> that is some great electrified dancing. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So good. And there's also the part where the, 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 the second-in-command guy... When they're they're trying to get away, is in the chaos of everything at the end, and then he jumps out and goes, "Don't shoot! It's just me!" And then he gets shot. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this was fun, Rick. Thank you, man. I, I oh yeah, man. Say, you know, I hope all of our choices are like this. I'm sure there's going to be some real stinkers in there, but uh, I'll try not to make it so. We'll, we'll try to do it together. But you know, if it's not slightly bad, where's the fun talking about it? Usually with shows like this, it just that's what I loved about you know this format of you, you you roll the dice right even if it's really bad you can still have fun talking about it and that's I don't know uh, that's the thing I never could convince Danny about with Hell Ming is like you know you know what our, our biggest downloaded episode was King Cobra <laughs> the worst movie we covered because people want to go oh man I gotta hear him talk about that because everybody's talked about Escape from New York and I mean you know and you have you feel like you have to do them, but it's those oddball things like this that you know makes for a great show because a lot of times it's even hard to describe. That's the reason I had bat crap crazy just a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's hard to even say what happens in those movies, and this is kind of the same way. How do you describe a shield that's no shield? You know, <laughs> it's like if you watch, like, I think you did Carnosaur, didn't you, on your show, oh. uh, Doctor Movie? Those were hard to watch. <laughs> it's like you watched that first one. It's just this little floppy little dinosaur puppy. Like, how is this threatening? But yeah, I'm gonna right. keep on. I'm gonna keep on watching this. You know, like, yeah. Somebody I know did the Ginger Dead Man on their show is like torture for their co-host. It's like, yes, yeah. it is torturous. That that, that is, there are worse things than Carnosaur, and the Ginger Dead Man series is one of them. It did. That, I agree. Uh, oh my gosh. Yep. But we got uh, to catch the 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 premiere. Of Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> At Texas Frightmare, and I can't say that I'm proud that I got to see it. <laughs> yeah, now, now, Charlie Band, if, if you're listening to this show, I love you. I respect many things you did. Oh, yeah. You do, but yeah. he, he's still out there hustling. I mean, they're not stuff I would enjoy, yeah. but the fact that you made a movie and it got made, you know, more, more power to you, okay? Absolutely, because people, I think, is his strength of his is his uh, films is built on people paying for the streaming service. And if you go to yeah. Full Moon Streaming, it's like an advertisement Full Moon Streaming. Now, I apologize, if I don't, but I don't apologize because there's stuff on there besides Full Moon stuff. They have the whole Grindhouse label on there. So yeah. in a way, it's more like the unsung hero of Shutter. If you want to go check yeah. it out, there's a lot of stuff on there that's not Full Moon stuff. But um, yeah. 
I respect him for making movies, and um. Sure, and he's made he's made some ones that I really like, and he's made a bunch that I'm like, yeah, no thanks, uh-huh. <laughs> you know. But hey, you know, I can say that about everybody. S- Subspecies Five looks really good though, and I'm very excited to watch it. <laughs> I, I, it looks it looks like it's going back to theatrical roots, and mm. uh, I think Cameron is going to go see it at the Chicago Draft House, and um, mm, cool. I'm very excited for him to go see it on the big screen, which is something else too. Yeah, full moon on the big screen. So he's really pushing it. He's really pushing the subspecies film, and <laughs> the, the trailer looks very. If you if you watch the trailer, Ricky, it looks very impressive. Yeah. It does look very impressive. Yeah, um, I, I thought it was like it's kind of a return to form. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the next film we're gonna do on this show, and I'm, I'm very excited. I, this is a film that I I got from the flea market from a friend, of my 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 friend I've known for many years. When he used to sell bootlegs on VHS, that's how long ago I go with this movie. <laughs> um, Directed by Stephen Chow, starring Stephen Chow, the great martial artist, 2001's Shaolin Soccer. So if you guys want to watch Shaolin Soccer, uh, you can watch it on Paramount Plus, apparently. We're looking at it right now. <laughs> and your cheap of plot synopsis is, a young Shaolin follower reunites with his discouraged brothers to form a soccer team using their martial arts skills to their advantage. Now, if I had to describe this film in the best way, take a, te- a movie about a soccer team... It has Dragon Ball Z type powers, okay? <laughs> like lighting the ball on fire, kicking into the goal, and stuff like that. R- really wild stuff. And I- I'm glad to share this with you, Ricky, because you've never seen it before. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for you to watch this. I'm yeah, it's going to be fun. Oh my gosh. It's <laughs> a lot of fun. It's one of those ones I just got from my bootleg guy because it didn't exist here yet, and this, and when I got Battle Royale from him before. I think like four or five years before the U.S. even knew about it. You know, I got wow. it from him, and man, lo- love this kind of cinema, and I'm looking forward to talking about it with you. Awesome. And, and um, next episode of, of Look What You Did. So this is like episode 